Just about every racing fan has an idea that would bring people to the track, get people interested in the beauty and excitement of thoroughbred racing. Some ideas get implemented, some don't. Many work well, others don't last too long. Sophia McKee, marketing director at Emerald Downs, hit a home run for local racing in 2014. Last year, the 128 members of the Emerald Racing Club had a ton of fun throughout the spring and summer, learning just about everything one could about the sport, and watching the club horses perform amazing feats. McKee's worked in racing on both coasts and follows all facets of the sport closely. She's a former exercise rider and loves the animals. A track promotion caught her eye. I always say a good idea is worth stealing, and so we stole the idea from Canterbury Park. They've had a Canterbury Racing Club for about five years, and so when we kind of started looking at ideas to invigorate racehorse ownership, we turned to them and asked them about their program. And then we modeled ours very similar um, to theirs. Our um, projections for the club to work was based on 50 members, so we knew we had to get to 50, and I had a chart outside my office with a little mark and a finish line with 50 at the finish line and just through advertising through the email newsletter and the website we quickly surpassed the 50 and then the next thing we're at 100 and we finally settled at 128 and we had a lot more inquiries after we closed the deadline. For $500 one could join the Emerald Racing Club. Included in that fee was horse ownership and much much more. So it far surpassed my expectations. I did not think we'd have, you know, that many. And the difference between our program and Canterbury's is that uh, our price point was much higher because we actually did go through and execute um, an owner license for every individual, which meant that they got the full benefits of being a licensed owner, such as, you know, free admission for the whole season and free parking and the backstretch access. So that was a lot different than Canterbury's program, where it was more just about coming out to the races the day of. Jim Engstrom fondly remembers times at the track as a youth in California with family and friends. More recently, he enjoyed his racetrack experience in Miami. He and his wife, Maggie, became early club members. I've been traveling a lot with my company, actually. Um, so I've been in four states in four years. Um, just keep bouncing around, and, and as they keep giving me new challenges, one of them that came up was Seattle. And so we looked at the opportunity when we were up here. Uh, first thing when we were thinking about relocating. So the company moved us over here, and uh, uh, we spent a couple of weekends, and we're just absolutely hooked. Engstrom wanted info on his new track, Emerald Downs. Our old friend Google kind of helped me out a little bit and then uh, on the front page when I was just happened to be flipping through uh, before the season was kicking off, um, own a part of a racehorse for 500 bucks and um, learn a little bit about the game, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so shot a few emails to Sophia and uh, the rest is kind of history. Before history could be made, Emerald Racing Club needed a horse. Selecting the horses actually was uh, a little stressful because now we had the owners and we had no horses to, for them to own. Uh, but we worked with the Rosses. Uh, Larry was down at Golden Gate and so we just started looking, looking for horses that would be in our price range. And realistically we knew we were looking for a horse that was a low level claimer, uh, maybe around the 5000 price range that was consistent. And a horse that's maybe a little bit older, uh, could run an open company here and uh, we even had some of our media people here at Emerald Downs looking at the daily racing form and trying to scope out horses. Six-year-old dancing yodeler joined the club on April 4th and with 128 members there was money enough to double the fun. Five-year-old mayor Annalena came next on May 10th. Before those two raced and continuing through the season there were numerous gatherings, activities, field trips, seminars and morning workouts for club members. So we wanted to really educate everybody about the different aspects of the industry. So early on, uh, we went to the breeding farms and we got to see all the foals because it was springtime. And then later on in the year, we organized additional trips to see the yearling sales prep. So then they got to see those same foals quite a bit larger in just a few months getting ready for the sale. And then we also had a, a group at, actually at the yearling sale that came out. So they got to see the whole evolution of the racehorse as it goes from you know being bred 
bred to being born. And then of course, with Annalena and Yodeler, they got to experience the racing part of it. And I think by giving everybody a well-rounded perspective of the industry, the idea was to prepare, prepare them with a good education. So if they wanted to pursue it on their own, they had the tools to do it. You know, we had a, a great time overall. Um, there's, there's so many events that they're planned on race days, uh, whether it be getting the tents uh, set up, having lunches and, and getting folks together and having multiple racetracks on, the Seahawks games going on at the same time. So it's kind of a pretty cool group event. McKee selected the team of Larry and Sharon Ross to be the club's trainers. Ross's stake stars are well documented and Sharon's heartfelt care of all things living is unquestioned. They would never shy away from inviting us in um, as any other owner would be invited in. And then on top of that, when you see the attachment that Sharon has to some of those horses, um, it, it, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. You, always, you can always rest assured that, that when, when they run, they're going to be healthy. And if they're not healthy, they're not running. The horse comes first. Um, and having the faith in that, even though she has 128 people that want to see him run and are making plans and doing all of those things. That's a pretty, uh, that, 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 a lot of weight gets uh, cast onto her shoulders. Spending time with Larry at the side of the, the track and watching him read a program differently than other people and getting to pick his brain on just an immense amount of knowledge, it, it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Pretty cool to watch. Dancing Yodler debuted for the Emerald Racing Club on June 1st. He finished an encouraging third, cheered on by a unified group of owners. After going unplaced in his next start, there was a slight class drop for a July 13th sprint. Wayne Racing. They came out evenly, showing out his Rissa with the early lead from Stroll for Us and War Wizard on the inside. And up in the center is Snoopa Dupa. Dancing Yodler second last. War Wizard under pressure, and it's on the outside. Stroll for Us taking over from War Wizard. Then Rissar and Buddy Davis late on the scene, but in the lead. Stroll for Us. Dancing Yodler's coming. Dancing Yodler might win here. Yes, Dancing Yodler through the pack. Dancing Yodler by a length. When I was watching that race, I was like, oh, you know, come on, buddy, get fourth. And, oh, oh we might get third. And then all of a sudden we had won. And it's like, oh, oh, my gosh, I have to get over screaming and run downstairs and direct people. We thought, oh, this is going to be a rough one. And somehow the horses split uh, right about at the... Uh, probably about the eighth and uh, the horses split and he just ran right through them and everybody sat there kind of spinning back and forth looking at each other did that just happen <laughs> and uh, I don't think anybody's ever seen uh, 125 people uh, try and cram onto uh, the racetrack and just what a goat rodeo that was trying to even get a picture everyone was so professional and queued up waited to get out on that track and then yodeler was of course the star and I have never seen a horse so proud of having one and he knew it he knew every single one of those people was there for him and he stood stock still because we had some people that were a little older and um, we had a person in a wheelchair so of course you're concerned about safety and the horse getting overly excited and he stood and accepted his congratulations and it was the best winter circle photo I've ever seen <laughs> It, it was just, it was a fantastic experience. I think people brought their friends, neighbors, um, uh, grandchildren. Uh, there was, I've never seen anything like it before. The club's excitement reached another high when Annalena got her turn to race on June 21st. Once upon a song, two in front. Annalena's coming home nicely on the inside. Once upon a song in front. Annalena chipping away is coming. Annalena's flying home on the inside, but too late. Once upon a song's gonna just, just get there. What a finish. Not a win, but the Emerald Racing Club had two ultra-competitive stretch runners. Annalena did have some physical issues and wasn't able to race again. She's now happily owned by club member Stephanie Murphy. Dancing Yodler, however, continued to run down early race leaders. August 9th was another day for the club to get together at Emerald Downs. The leader is Buds are flying. Here comes Dancing Yodler from the back, and Dancing Yodler swamps them in a couple of strides. And it's the Emerald Racing Club back to the winner's list. Dancing Yodler. Dancing Yodler, most impressive. Scores by two lengths to Buds of Flying. 
another joyous and enormous winner's circle. Really, with the Emerald Racing Club last year, you got the highs and the lows. I mean, you, you had Yodler winning races and Annalena running really strong and then uh, coming up with, with a nagging injury. Um, so there's, you, you'll, you'll learn about that as well. And, and it, it just kind of um, encapsulates the overall experience of the sport um, with, uh, again, a, a minimal investment up front. The Angstroms are taking the next step. A few of the members of the group, myself and uh, a few family members, have uh, banded together and we've formed uh, Left Coast Thoroughbreds LLC and we are going to be running uh, a couple of horses probably next year, one of them being Dancing Yodler who we purchased from the club at the end of the season. McKee's ecstatic over the club's experience last year and has one promotion penciled in for 2015. A Seattle Times story by Scott Hansen documented the season. We're going to run the club very much the same as we ran it this year. Uh, price to buy in will be the same. I've got a waiting list about 100 people long of people that were interested after the article came out in the Seattle Times. And uh, we're just going to go through it all again. 2015 is here. Join the club.